Hi everyone, welcome back to Wild Ginger Hand Weaving. In today's mug rug weaving tutorial, I'm going to be weaving an extended flame pattern in bound weave. If you've seen my previous tutorial on four block zigzag bound weave, today's pattern is going to be very similar in several ways. Just like in that previous tutorial, I'm going to be weaving two to twill on a four shaft loom. And for what exactly that means, see that previous tutorial which tells you which shafts each treadle lifts up and so on. As always, you can find the warping directions to set up your own loom, whether it's a floor loom or a table loom, in a link in the description below. Also, just like in that last tutorial, I'll be treadling one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and I won't change that treadling sequence at any point. And just like last time, this is a block pattern, which means that after I weave a particular sequence of colors, I'm going to repeat that sequence four times to build up a block of the pattern. Then I'll rearrange the colors and repeat the new sequence four times to build up the next pattern block and so on. What's different about today's pattern is simply where I place the colors. Last time I got a thin zigzag line by putting a different color in each of the four sheds and shifting them all over into the next shed in the next pattern block. Here, I'm going to make my zigs and zags double wide, which means sometimes we'll be using two colors in a block, and sometimes we'll be using three colors in a block, but we're never actually using all four all at once. So enough background, let's just do it. Okay, to start out my pattern, I'm going to be using dark blue in shed one. And to start, I'm gonna take that tail and just Fold it around the end and tuck it in. But after these first couple threads are added in, I will start tapering because there are a lot more stops and starts of yarn in this pattern than some others that I've done. And if you're not careful, that extra buildup of tucking the end in will skew out the sides. So we'll start tapering in a little bit. But for now, I've got dark blue in one, and I'm going to use dark blue again in shed two because we want these zigs and zags to be double wide. Now I'm going to add in my second color, my light blue, in shed three. And again, since I'm just starting out, I will tuck this around without tapering it. But that's the last time. And then I'm going to use the same color, my light blue, in shed four. Now I'm gonna repeat that sequence, dark, dark, light, light, in one, two, three, four, three more times for four total. If you have a particularly light or heavy bead or if you're using different yarns, you can repeat that sequence of four sheds uh, any number of times. You could move right ahead to the next one without any repeats, or you could repeat it five, 10 times if you wanted. That's just up to you and your particular yarns and preferences. Okay, so again, that's dark, dark, and light, light. Okay, my first block is completed now, and so it's time to switch up the arrangement of my colors for my second block. And in my second block, I'm gonna be starting again with dark blue in shed one. But this is going to be the end of it for dark blue because I do have those zigs and zags. So we've just come to the point for the dark blue, so it only gets used once. Now my medium blue is going to shift over, my light blue, to sheds two and three instead of three and four. So there it is on two and three. And now I'm going to add in a new color light green in shed four. So this is going to be the tip of a point of a zigzag for the green as well. So I'm adding it in now and I don't want that extra bulk so I'm going to taper this as I add it in by going back oh not quite two inches and slipping my scissors here in between the plies and trimming it off and throw that away. And I'm going to go a little further out towards the end 
and go in there. It's easier with pointier scissors. Trim another ply and throw that away. And if you want, you can go ahead and do a third one, but I find you don't really need to at that point. So I've tapered this so it comes to a point and when you fold it over itself, you kind of have the original bulk since you've folded it over at the edge. So that won't contribute to build up on the sides. Okay, so I have my new sequence now. I've got dark blue on one, medium blue on two and three, and light blue on four. And I'm gonna repeat this new sequence again four times total. Okay, I've just done my fourth pick of dark blue in shed one for this block. And even though I'm not done with the block yet, I am done with dark blue. So before I weave the remaining three picks of my last go round, I'm gonna taper my blue. So when you're ending a thread and tapering it, if you're really adventurous, you might go through here and just trim it up right in place. If you're nervous that you're gonna cut the warp threads, you could alternately uh, unweave it for about an inch and then start trimming it and then weave it back in by hand. I like to leave a nice long tail so I can kind of grab it through at the back and then I'll just trim that at the end when I'm all done. Okay, that was my last pick of dark blue. So now I'm gonna continue with my final two picks of the light blue and green to finish off the block. Now my next block doesn't use dark blue, that's why I cut it off. Now I'm using light blue in shed one and two. And my green will now fall in three and four. And like always, repeat that three more times. Okay, so that block is complete. Now we're gonna start a new one with light blue, just in shed one, green, now in two and three. And now a new color in four. I could add back my dark blue or I could introduce a new color every time I come to a new zigzag. I'm gonna be adding in a fourth color in this pattern today. So I'm gonna start adding in my white color in shed four. I'm gonna taper that. This is a four ply yarn. I'm just gonna make two cuts. Okay, so that's my new sequence of colors. Light blue, green, green, and white. Next block, I'll be using green in one and two, and white in three and four.
Okay, it's time for a new block with three colors. I'm starting with green in one, white in two and three, and I'm going to add back my dark blue color in shed four. If you're having trouble remembering when you need to cut off a thread, basically you're going to cut off that first color every time that you have a block with three colors in it. So I have a three color block now. I've got green, white, white, dark blue. So in the final pass, it's going to be time to cut off the green. Okay, again, that's green, white, white, dark blue. Okay, my new block is going to be white, white, dark, dark. Okay, for my next block, again, it's a three color block with white in shed one, which means that white will get cut off at the end of this block. Then dark in two and three. And I'm gonna add my light blue back in. Okay, that takes us to the end of one complete pattern repeat. Now to continue weaving, you will just start back here at our first block and weave your way through all that we've just done until you're at the length of a mug rug or however long you wanna go. So that's this pattern. Let me weave it up until it's all finished. And here again is what the mug rug looks like when it's finally completed. We've got big bold patterns that are starting to look like some of the designs you see in saddle blankets, and I'll be getting to more of those freeform saddle blanket patterns in future videos. But for now, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Happy weaving!